The last exam has been taken, the final paper submitted. You've made it through one of the most rigorous educational experiences in the world. Well done. To the parents and families of the class of 2012, congratulations to you. The last tuition check has cleared. The last parking ticket has been paid. But a warning, if you are counting on newly acquired disposable income, forget it. Speaking from experience, the National Bank of Mom and Dad is still open for business. <laughs> to the entire William & Mary community, congratulations. Taylor Reevely has agreed to re-up for another three years as president. We're very lucky to have him. <laughs> Graduates, you have earned a degree from an institution known as the alma mater of a nation. This is a tremendous honor and one that comes with equally great responsibility. You see, it's not that William and Mary was the alma mater of a nation. It is the alma mater of a nation. For centuries, our college has produced leaders for our country, not just in Washington, D.C., but in countless communities. You know the presidents, Jefferson, Monroe, Tyler. George Washington got his surveyor's license from William and Mary in the mail. Classes were easier in those days. <laughs> A multitude of other alumni found ways to lead wherever they found themselves. William and Mary still produces leaders of national caliber. Just look around you. Nation building is a term often heard these days. Many of our military men and women are helping this work in countries around the world. Much of the challenge involves finding ways to overcome differences and helping people realize how strong they can be when standing together. The United States today is a nation, in, a country in need of nation building. You graduate in an era when polarizing factors are fracturing the foundation of our system the moderate center. Compromise is now equated to a lack of principles. It was not always so. Just over a mile from here stands Virginia's colonial capital, where many of our founding fathers stood on principle but were willing to compromise when needed for the greater good. It was that attitude in Independence Hall in Philadelphia and for so many years in Washington, D.C., that made the United States the greatest nation in the world. The atmosphere today is strikingly different. Now let me be quick to reassure you that I have great hope for the future. As I said last Charter Day, I have no doubt that the graduates and scholars of William & Mary, this community of learning, listening, and working through issues, rooted in the original soil and the basic principles of American liberty, have a special role and a special obligation to be part of the solution as leaders, as public servants, and as citizens. Based on William & Mary's track record, I have no doubt that you're on your way to accomplishing great things. But wherever life's journey takes you, find the opportunities to help build our nation. Realize that in addition to making a living, you have the responsibility to make a life, one anchored in service to others. This legacy of service is the greatest tradition of the College of William and Mary, the alma mater of a nation. It is now yours to uphold. Congratulations and God bless.